Hello everybody, it's Ifrault04 for the weekly update. Uh, so a few things today. Uh, first of all, um, scheduling. Uh, starting Wednesday night and going into the weekend uh, is the Jewish holiday of Rosh Hashanah. It's the Jewish New Year. So I'm not going to be around from that point till Wednesday night to Saturday night. But hopefully I'll have videos and... Uh, uh, everything scheduled for all over the place. Um, we have, uh, you know, Golden to the Lost Age. We have Rakuin. Um, I, uh, started a Let's Play of Owlboy on, uh, Much Games Guides. I'll put a link to that in the description <clears throat> if you want to check that out. I record a whole bunch of that, so it should be twice a week uploading there. Uh, depending on how much I'm able to get rendered in... Sunday, Monday, Tuesday of this week. Um, so yeah, this is the kind of the start of the Jewish holiday season this year. Um, for those of you who've been around, you know it's, it's kind of like a month block of stuff. Uh, this year, it's um, Wednesday to Saturday night this week. Uh, next week's not really going to be affected because uh, the next holiday is a week from Saturday. But after that uh, is the holiday of... Uh, uh, Sukkot, which is like a nine-day period, and that's going to be over the course of a week and a half, um, starting at the latter half, like Wednesday night of the following week. But we'll talk about that when we get there. Hopefully videos won't be um, affected, but I'll, we'll, we'll work with it as we go. Um, uh, just on that note, before I get to like stuff and things... Um, I talk about this every year. I'm going to talk about it more next Sunday, which is in the period between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, because um, the two are connected. Rosh Hashanah is the new year um, when we're essentially judged for the year, and uh, Yom Kippur, which is the end of that period, of a 10-day period, uh, is the Day of Atonement, where we ask for forgiveness um, for everything. So... Um, I'll talk about it more on the Sunday in between, which is next Sunday, but, uh, just as a, um, just because there's a lot of other stuff I want to talk about in this update, and I don't want it to drag on too long, and I don't want it to kind of lose the meaning, but, uh, I just want to ask forgiveness from, from anybody, um, if there's anything I might have done to you this year, or not done that I was supposed to, um, uh, I do apologize. If there's anything specific that you want to bring up, um, please bring it up with me. If you feel uncomfortable asking me directly, um, you can go to, uh, I'll put a link to my ask account. It's a website where you can ask people questions. There's an option to ask people something anonymously. So, um, if you just want to say something, I won't, I don't necessarily answer it so that it shows up on Twitter, but if you want to say something there anonymously, that's a good place. So, um, if you just have any particular gripes or anything, um, that you don't feel comfortable saying, because I know I have a lot of things that I don't feel comfortable saying to people where, you know, it's a gripe, but like, I don't want them to know it's me. <laughs> um never done that to people, but, uh, if there, if there's anything out there that you really want to address that you just want me to try to think about or work on, uh, please let me know. Uh, there's just a concept in Judaism that, um, uh, on the day of atonement, uh, you know, assuming that you're actually sorry for what you've done, God forgives your sins, but that's only the sins that you do on a religious basis, you know, not, uh, not, uh, practicing the religion properly or doing things wrong, things like that. Stuff that you do to other people, so sins between you and God, uh, you can address at that point, but sins between you and your fellow man don't get forgiven just by t asking God to forgive them. You have to get forgiveness from the people you've wronged first. It's not a get out of jail free card so that I can do whatever I want to anybody and then just say, oh, God, you forgive me, right? No, you have to get your forgiveness from other people, so it's an important thing to me. It's something I ask every year. Uh, there's some new people here from time to time, so, um, like I said, if there's anything that's specific that I've done that you want to address, please do let me know, because it is important to me. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll make a more 
more of a video next week, um, or at least a twit longer or something, since most people don't watch my videos. They, a lot more people just follow me on Twitter and read that, so it might be there, and I might just link it. Uh, but yeah, so this past week was an interesting week. Uh, I did a stream. I started streaming uh, a redo on my Let's Play of Wario Land 3. For those of you who haven't been here, or who are new relative to like three or four years, uh, I used to be in a collab group called um, Gamers United. Uh, that is no longer around anymore, obviously. Um, and I did a Wario Land 3 Let's Play on that channel, which was interesting and very meme worthy. Uh, unfortunately, the channel was deleted by the owner. Uh, and it was like right after I had gotten rid of all of my uh, backup files for Wario Land 3 that I kept, which I'm not making that mistake again, but um, I keep backups of everything that I do on hard drives. I have a few, several terabyte large hard drives full of my old videos just in case something happens. Um, but uh, I... So I wanted to do a redo of the Let's Play for a while because it just doesn't exist anymore. Uh, I was able to save a few other LPs, like my Super Mario Land 2 Let's Play on my channel is from Gamers United way back in the day. It was a Gamers United or is that from Worldwide? That might have been from Worldwide Let's Players, actually. Um, also, my Let's Play of Link's Awakening, half of it was from an old collab that I saved it from. But uh, anyway, so last uh, last week I streamed uh, the essentially the first half of Warrior Land Three. We got through the story mode, and now we're just up to finishing up the extras and everything. So I'm going to try to finish that up maybe tonight, probably tonight at around 6 p.m. Eastern time. Um, before that, I'm also going to be doing the Game Sharks challenge of the week and a half week, uh, which is um, Super Mario World, uh, getting to uh, Morton's Castle, the second castle, as fast as you can, while also getting the Yellow Switch Palace. So, um, I'm okay at the game there. Um, I'm probably going to be somewhere in the middle like I usually am in the rankings. Uh, I could do about 15 minutes with that. Um, 14 if I'm lucky, but, like, some of the people are getting, like, 10 and a half, 11 minutes times. I'm just like, what? Uh... Something I really love about the Game Sharks challenges is that it it's it helps since they it focuses on older games. It helps show um, how awesome I mean, a lot of people are games, but specifically Nintendo Capri Sun, because I feel like a lot of people know him mainly just from the like they don't watch his his channel. They just watch the Runaway Guys and his stuff, and he's kind of like the background personality. Um, he's always like he, I don't know, he's like the underdog. I always root for him. Uh, but he's the underdog, he's not really as loud uh, as, as John and, and Emil. Um, but he's really good at video games, at classic video games. Like, he was in a race this past week on uh, Proton John's live stream, and um, they were doing Castlevania. So, uh, even with his game crashing like three or four times, uh, he still got first place in beating Castlevania. Uh, then Proton John got second, and then he got third by beating the hard mode, which is the second run. It's a hard mode um, before anyone else finished their runs, their first runs. So he got first and third place. Um, and also, like when we had the Tetris challenge, um, he blew everybody out of the water, and then at PAX, unofficially, he almost doubled his score. It was like 450,000 points in a single game of Tetris NES. Um, and he's uh, Super Mario World also. He, I think he got a... I, I don't know. Did he go yet? I think he might have. Um, but yeah, it's just... He's, he's really good at video games. And I'm just happy to see people able to acknowledge that. Because I think he deserves it. Um, but, uh, yeah, the biggest thing that really happened this week, uh, this past week, was Nintendo Direct, talking about 3DS and Switch games coming up mostly during, like, the fall holiday season, uh, and a few going into the world, uh, the other times, I'll just give you a few highlights, um, leaving out a bunch of games, um, 
We uh, got a few details on Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. Uh, there's two new Ultra Beasts. There's going to be like new locations and clothing options, and the story's going to be changed up a little bit. So that's going to be cool. Can't wait for that. Uh, if you get gold or silver for the Virtual Console, uh, which are coming out in November, no, it's coming out this month, September something, 22nd. Um, it'll uh, you'll get a uh, a Celebi that you can transfer to. Um, the Gen 7 games, so that's cool. Uh, you know, Sun and Moon or Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. So you'll get a Celebi. Yay! Um, there's the 3DS game coming out that's essentially like a best of Mario Party. It's like 100 Mario Party mini games. I don't know the details of how exactly you're going to play it, if it's just going to be like, you know, playing one game after another, or there's going to be some sort of board, but it's, it's like a best of Mario Party. I'm probably not going to get it just because there's no online play and, um, local play is kind of iffy because I don't really have anybody to play with. It's my little brother, but like we tried that with Island Tour and it didn't work out well. So, I don't know. Um, they also talked a lot about Xenoblade Mo wow. Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Uh, a lot. <coughs> and uh, yeah, it looks really, really good. I'm excited. They also finally announced a release date and it's this year. It's December 1st. You're all welcome. It's three days before my birthday. Uh, and as we all know, my birthday brings out the best in Nintendo. Um, around my birthday, we had such releases as Mario Kart 7, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, Xenoblade Chronicles X was on my birthday. Now Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is right before, so you're all welcome. Um, uh, stuff announced for Splatoon 2, like Kelp Dome and a bunch of other cool stuff. So yeah, people were excited to see Kelp Dome come back. Uh, Snipper Clips is getting DLC, which is cool. I thought that was a fun game. It's getting a DLC slash standalone, like, deluxe version. Um, so, yeah, it's a good game. I think it's a bit underrated. Um, you need a second person to play with, but, uh, it's, it's clever and it's cute, and I think it was a good launch title. Uh, let's see, Breath of the Wild, uh, Amiibo, Champion Amiibo are coming out on November 10th, which I really should put a pre-order on if I can, because those are going to sell like hotcakes. Uh, there's also like going to be Amiibo for um, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga plus Bowser's Minions. This could be a Koopa and a Goomba uh, Amiibo. I'm probably not going to get those. Um, probably still going to get the game. Maybe not right away. I don't know. We'll see. I'm just not hyped for it because I like the art style of the original. Which we'll come back to when I talk about something later, actually. Um, let's see. Uh... They talked more about Project Octopath Traveler, which was kind of hinted at E3. It's a Square Enix RPG where you play as can play as eight different people, and they all have their own stories, and they all have their own like cool abilities. Like one guy can just challenge anybody to a duel, uh, and and uh, this other woman can just have anybody escort her places, and they can do stuff or help her out in battle. And they uh, put out a demo for it doesn't have a work, it's just still a working title, but they put out a demo for it, and it was very fun. Um, it's like a neat, Bravely Defaulty, oh, I don't know, Bravely Defaulty, uh, it's made by the Bravely Default people. It's like, an, the background area is like neat, uh, old-time look with like sprite-based characters, so it's hard to explain, but uh, it's something I really like, and I'm glad they didn't go for like a chibi art style, because that's one of the reasons why I'd never touched a lot of the DS slash 3DS Square Enix games just because I I don't like the characters that look like that. Like, I couldn't get through Final Fantasy 3DS. 3 DS, not 3DS. Final Fantasy 3 for the DS because the characters, I, I just hated the art style. Um, they talked more, a little bit more about Kirby Star Allies, which is the Switch Kirby game that's coming out. Um, and it looks so adorable and amazing, and I can't wait for it. Also, buff DDD! Uh, they talked a lot about Mario Odyssey, and it looks so good! It looks so good! And, uh, finally, the thing that really surprised me the most was that after Bethesda was talking about Skyrim, uh, for the Switch, they announced that they're going to be porting the recent Doom, Doom 2016, and Wolfenstein 2 to the Switch, which actually kind of blew my mind. Like, I did not see that coming, because Nintendo is generally, like, it doesn't have, like, the shooters like that. Um, 
it's been branching more towards uh, like having some mature games on it um but like wolfenstein and doom are like you know they're like ultra violent games <laughs> and it's really cool to see that bethesda was able to is going to be bringing them to the switch um i think in october or something is doom and wolfenstein 2 is going to be next year which means i'm probably going to get for ps4 since that's coming out this year on ps4 but yeah like you can go from splatting people in splatoon to you know going around breath of the wild it's exploring on your horse in a fantasy setting to shooting nazis with shotguns <laughs> on the same console <laughs> it's crazy it's so, like it's so cool also um i got this shirt from the yeti it's a katamari slash final fantasy 7 logo um, if it looks familiar, it's kind of like the, um, channel banner that Mr. Bad Awesome made for me many years back, except obviously this is the Final Fantasy VII logo colors, but, uh, yeah, that's really cool. Like, I have this now, it's like, I feel like this shirt is, is gonna be my, um, my, like, trademark type of thing, because FF7 Katamari is just kind of a perfect combination, you know? Um, but yeah, the final thing to talk about is the stuff, and this week, Metroid Samus Returns. If you didn't see my first impressions video, there's a first impressions video put out on Friday, you should check it out. I'm about, I would say, 10 hours into the game. Uh, also I got a, um, cute little keychain from GameStop for pre-ordering. It's really good. <laughs> um... So, when I was talking before about Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga Bowser's Minions, I really love how a lot of games on the Game Boy Advance looked. And I think that moving to DS slash 3DS ruined a lot of games. Um, Golden Sun, Dark Dawn, I did, really didn't... Dark Dawn? It's Dark Dawn, right? Yeah. I didn't really like the art style there. I loved and love... Um, the Game Boy Advance Golden Suns. Uh, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, I love how that game looks. It's just so expressive and all the character and artwork and, and it's so bright and cheerful and just everybody just is is so vibrant. Um, and then he kind of lost that a little bit when he moved on to Partners in Time, but it was still good on the DS. Bowser's um, Inside Story also still still pretty good, but then it went to the 3DS and I think that just completely killed the art style. And they're remaking my favorite game in the series and it looks bad to me. Like, it doesn't look like it has that same character. Um, moving on to Metroid, uh, Fusion was probably the... F yeah, Fusion was the first Metroid game that I actually ever beat. Zero Mission, I think, was the second. I still haven't played through... Uh, 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 Super Metroid in its entirety... And I suck at the original on the NES. Uh, I'd never played Samus Return, uh, Return of Samus on the Game Boy, um, really. But I love, absolutely love the Game Boy Advance art style, which is essentially the Super Metroid art style. It's it's all like the same, the same category of that sprite work. Uh, so when I saw Samus Returns on the 3DS here, I kind of had the same vibes of it's a good, probably going to be a good game, but you know, there it's something died is going to have died along the way because they moved to the 3DS and they want to make everything nice. But um, while in general, I still prefer the Game Boy Advance type sprite work. This game just like has so much detail in it. the The foreground and the background are both completely dynamic. Uh, the background often has a lot of moving parts and things that just have, don't have anything to do with the game, but a lot of the times it has stuff that does uh, interact with the game. Maybe not like with your character directly, but like if you don't notice something in the background, you're going to be really surprised later, or things come out of the background into the foreground. Um, Cutscenes and things like that. Uh, some of the 
bosses and events have blown me away like actually blown me away the game uses 3d which is something that not a lot of 3d s games do these days um, and the controls are for the most part fantastic the music is like top-notch metroid music um, like I, I recommend playing with headphones just to be able to hear everything over like the sounds of you shooting and stuff the abilities are great I think the the progression and uh, progression and um, pacing is well done uh, it feels really good to find that new power up you know just like you're kind of struggling to get around and then all of a sudden you know get the spacer <laughs> they have a lot of stuff that I don't know was necessarily in the first game like I said I don't know how the original goes but it's stuff that was not in uh, that was in Super Metroid, but not Fusion or Zero Mission, so uh, it's just cool. Or stuff that was not in any of those, but was in, like, Prime, or I don't know if it was even in... I don't know what the... I think I think the Spider-Ball was in Prime, right? Maybe? I don't know. But uh, whatever it is, it's really cool, and it's just fun to explore and fight the enemies. The melee counter is one of the most useful things I've ever seen because I'm somebody who generally tanks enemies and this just adds a lot of elements of interactivity with the, with the fights that you didn't really have in the original games where you just shot everybody. Um, the boss fights and mini boss fights and stuff because you fight a lot of Metroids and like as they start evolving they get really tough. Uh, I die a lot. Um, it's just like they they all have that interactive element that you have to try to get them at that one moment to counter and then start pumping them full of missiles and things and it's just uh i've had a lot of like really exciting tense moments that um i've come to expect from metroid games and also that like sense of dread at certain points that Fusion gave me, which Fusion is like the standard that I hold the series to. It might just be because it's the first game that I really played and got into, but also because Fusion has like, has a quasi horror element where I feel that some of the other games didn't really have that. They were more exploration and, you know, being a Metroid game, you know, exploration, finding things, but because it was a more narrative driven game, Fusion, like, with especially with the SAX um just had like a more horror element there was a lot of like scary moments and things and they were able to transfer that into this game in certain parts so far I I don't know how far into the game I am I'm in terms of like percentages I'm at like 20 or something I don't, I don't know like 20 percent complete with the whole game but, um, I'm in, like, area four or five, um, but it's, it's just, like, all the best parts of the 2D Metroids that I can remember are put into this game, and I wasn't one of the people that was scared about it because of the developers. I wasn't, I didn't know anything about, um, whoever it was, was it Mercury Steam or whatever they're called that, uh doesn't say here that uh, put it together um, because I never played any of the original games so I didn't have any of that like baggage from being burned from them <clears throat> but it's it's just good <laughs> it's good and I was up till about 4 30 in the morning playing it last night which most of the time I'm playing a good game around the two o'clock point I usually fall asleep anyway but this was just it was keeping me, it was keeping me in its grips, and uh, it's a very strong 3DS game. <laughs> some of the controls, like I said, some of the controls can be a little annoying at times. There's certain segments where I died a lot just because you have to get like very precise uh, inputs in either avoiding enemies or navigating yourself around, but. It's just because I think my hands don't fit the 3DS too well, even if it's an XL. Um, but yeah, it's good stuff. I recommend it. Uh, and that's going to do for this weekly update. I 
dragged it along anyway because I spent like 10 minutes talking about Metroid, but uh, yeah, it's I'm really, really pleased with this game. Uh, they didn't just throw it out because they wanted to compete with another Metroid 2 remake. They, they put time into this. Um, as for games, I don't think anything's coming out this week. Except for maybe the Virtual Console Pokemon and Pokin. I'm not getting Pokin Deluxe. It looks cool, but I'm, I'm probably not getting it. Um, but Danganronpa 3 and the SNES Classic are coming out in the following week, and that's gonna be nice! Very nice! And yeah, thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Remember, check out Owlboy, and if you want to bring any grievances to me anonymously, uh, the, the link for Ask will be in the description, so thank you all, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye!